Hey friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Kay. I'm a professional home organizer and soprano here in the Boston area and I'm here to inspire you to love your home as much as I love mine. So I made a video like this a few years ago and I thought I'd make a little update video. Let's talk about what is clutter and how to determine whether or not you have too much stuff. So there is so much talk in the world right now about clutter. Reducing clutter, decluttering, and how to prevent clutter. It is just all over. Everyone's talking about getting rid of clutter, clutter-free life, all this stuff. And I've noticed a slight trend towards people feeling pressured to declutter or feeling ashamed of their clutter in their homes. And so people have started to declutter when they didn't really have to. So today we're gonna talk about what I think is clutter, what the things you should be watching out for, and how to determine if you actually have more items than you can deal with. So let's talk about clutter. Clutter is unfortunately something that is in the eye of the beholder. So it's only determined by you, the person who is dealing with your items, whether or not your item is clutter. So I usually take one of two or possibly sometimes even both criteria to determine whether or not an item is clutter. So the first criterion I usually use is, is this item serving you right now? Has it stopped serving you? Was it ever serving you in any way? Which meaning like, is it adding to your life? Do you love it? Is it giving you joy when you look at it? Is it like something decorative that you really like to look at? Or is it useful? Like it's a pair of scissors, toilet paper, whatever. Or do you just need it? Like it's a can of food or something. So, and the other criterion I always like to use if, in case there's any question is do you have a bad relationship with this item and truly anything in your house that you have a poor bad fractured relationship with should ideally leave your home I don't want to have stressors in my house and clutter is definitely a stressor if you live in a cluttered environment or what you perceive is a cluttered environment because again, clutter is in the eye of the beholder. It can actually be very stressful for you. You can raise your cortisol levels, you can interfere with your sleep. So it is a real thing that clutter is stressful. So if you have bad relationships with the items and I will go into detail about what that is, it may be clutter. So let's talk about bad relationships with items. I am not a therapist, but I always like to think of myself as a clutter therapist because when I go to people's houses and help them out with their stuff, I always ask them what their relationship is like with the item. So uh, it may be they get stressed when they look at it or they feel guilty when they look at it. This is a very, very common phenomenon if the item was a gift or if they paid a lot of money to obtain the item. Like let's say it's a really expensive purse or sculpture that either they don't like anymore, or it could be both. It was an expensive item that was given to them and now they don't know what to do with it, but it makes them guilty every time they look at it because they don't like it, but they don't want to get rid of it. So that is an indication that it probably should leave your home. Another example is if you feel guilty because you feel like you should be using it, but you're not. So let's say you went to the store and you bought, you know, five packages of yarn and the, you know, all of the knitting, gadgets and supplies and you've had this knitting container maybe next to your couch and weeks go by maybe months go by you keep passing the basket and you say to yourself oh, I, I really should like sit down and knit but at your core maybe you just don't have time maybe you are not interested enough and you thought you were going to be interested enough this is that fantasy self that i talk about a lot like it's that person you want to be but at your core it's not really who you are because you're not interested enough to pursue it so every time that you pass this container you feel super guilty and super sad because a you spend money and b it's just sitting there like just rotting away so in reality these things are clutter and they are clutter to you because of the way that they make you feel and the way that they're interfering with the life in your particular home. I watch a lot of minimalist house tours on YouTube. I watch a lot of different house tours on YouTube. I, I like to enjoy them. I think they're fun to watch. And I, I particularly like the minimalist house tours because there's always like one comment down towards the bottom that is like, this house isn't minimalist, so many unnecessary items. And I wanna stress that items that somebody needs are unique to their situation, their life. 
and have nothing to do with items that you need in your life. There are a lot of videos on YouTube that are titled things like 10 things to declutter before 2023 or five things I don't buy anymore as a whatever, whatever, or 15 things to toss in your kitchen today. These are helpful, I guess, for people who are looking for some inspiration or just need somewhere to get started if they don't know where to get started decluttering. But I do find that naming specific items for me, I find to be unhelpful for you because these are things that are maybe helpful for you in your life. Like maybe you need 40 cameras and 50 lenses, but I don't because I'm not a professional photographer. So it's very individual to you. So I, I like to just refer to the two criteria that is this item serving you or do you have a fractured relationship with these items? Sometimes it's just one, sometimes it's both. Often it's both <laughs> that whether the item's not serving you and you have a fractured relationship with it. So those are the items that really need to go. I've also noticed that since the rise in popularity of the Marie Kondo book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, uh, which is a very good book, by the way, you should read it if you have not read it. You can take, you know, whatever you want from it. You don't have to stay true to the entire method of decluttering. However, I've found since the popularity of that book and the popularity of professional organizing as a, a profession and decluttering as a trend that some of us have just started to take decluttering to a slightly dysfunctional level and have started to declutter just for the sake of decluttering. Somewhere along the line, we've started to see decluttering as a virtuous behavior and we began to actually demonize items, inanimate objects, which simply for, for me, in my opinion, are just neutral. They're just, they exist. They aren't good or bad. They just exist. And how many you own doesn't make you uh, either a good person or a bad person. So you could be a monster of a person and own five items, or, or you could be a very, very virtuous, very sweet, kind person and own 10,000 items. So the act of decluttering itself doesn't make you a good or bad person. It just is a state. It can simplify your life and make your environment less stressful, but that's pretty much all it's doing. Uh, I want to get away from the demonizing of items and the added virtue of decluttering. Being a minimalist and owning as many items as you just feel like you need is something that is great, but I don't think that it makes anyone a good person. So how do you determine whether or not you have too much stuff? Well, some indicators that you might have too much stuff is that you have too many items to handle and you have too many items to manage. So everything in your house and everything in your home is it a, an item that you have to manage. And if you find yourself not being able to find items, if you find yourself struggling to store items, and if you find yourself putting other items on top of other items or behind other items, you might have too much stuff. And of course, obviously, if you were having trouble moving about your home, you may have too many items. Um, but too many is something that, again, is unique to you. Do not feel pressured to declutter items just because you feel like society is pressuring you to declutter items. If you feel like, if your comfort level of items is different than your sister's comfort level of items in her home, that is your business. And when you go over to her house, if she has a lot more items than you, and but she's happy and she's living her life, it's again, it's none of your business, it's none of my business. But if you're unsure and you need some help to determine whether or not you have too many things to deal with or whether or not you need to keep other things if you have trouble making decisions, that's when you call in someone like me, a professional organizer, or you get a really organized and neutral friend, family member to come over and help you declutter. As an enthusiastic lifetime learner, I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and being an amazing partner to the channel for the last few years. If you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including design, photography, video editing, and even plant keeping. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so you can move your creative journey forward without putting your life on hold. Some of the classes are really short and yesterday I was having a really really hard time with imposter syndrome of all things. I uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video I'm a professional singer in my other life and I woke up just feeling 
really bad about myself and sometimes we all have those days and I just wanted to get a hold of some of the negative thoughts. I took this amazing class on Skillshare by Crystal Sestari and it was called Rewrite Imposter Syndrome with a Creative Mantra. The class is really brief, it's less than an hour and I was so moved by this class. I wanted to talk about it today. I have been having so much trouble with negative self-talk, especially with my own voice, my singing, and she basically had the great idea to write this creative mantra and to use that in places when you were talking to yourself negatively. And I chose one and I put it as the screensaver on my phone. I'm gonna put it here so you can see, but when I have negative thoughts about my own singing, I just look down on my phone and it says, I will nurture, love, and respect my one and only unique voice. So not only can you learn about video editing and cooking and all that stuff, you can learn to be kind to yourself. And I really, really appreciated that class. I had, it was life-changing. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable when compared to in-person classes and workshops. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know down in the comment below, have you started to declutter things when you didn't really need to? You just felt like you had to? Let me know. I'm, I'm actually curious to see what the answers are. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed the video. I gotta go. Take care of yourselves and the ones around you.